Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone today. And I pray that the word of God will take effect and do practical things, performance in your life in Jesus' name. I pray that the word will not be lost on you. The word has power. Prayer for the word, performance in the word, relying on the word solves our problems. The word will solve your problem. He sent his word and heal them is the word. It's not the pastor, it's not his prayer alone, it's not just praying and praying and fasting, it's the word. And when the word has roots in your life, your problems are over. My problems are over. Father, we thank you today and bless you for this service. We give glory to you. And we thank you, Lord, because the word that made the earth, the word that created everything, that word you have given to us. And we pray that that word will approach every sin that God has not planted in our lives in Jesus' name. That the word will come every storm. The word will heal every sickness. And the word will destroy every work of the devil in every life in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that the word will work wonders in every life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you and God will keep on blessing you. You can sit down. We're coming to Luke chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 22. Luke chapter 8, reading from verse 22. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a sheep with his disciples and he said unto them, Let us go over somebody let us go over say it aloud let us go over unto the other side of the lake and they launched forth verse 23 it says but when they sailed he fell asleep and there came down a storm of wind on the lake and they were filled with water. And then it says they were in jeopardy. In verse 24, it says, And it came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuilt the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased. And there was a calm in your life, in your family, in your place of work, in your village, all around you, there will be a calm. In verse 25, verse 25 says, And he said unto them, Where is your faith? Think about that. Where is your faith? There is a faith that grants us salvation. There is another kind of faith that moves mountain. There is a faith that sanctifies us, purifies our heart, purifying their hearts by faith. There is another kind of faith, a higher kind of faith, that says, peace be still, and all the calm will come in your situation. There is a faith that receives the power, the anointing, the unction, 
the bulldozing power of the Holy Ghost. There's another kind of faith that speaks to a mountain and says, mountain, be thou removed, and that mountain from your life will go away. There is a faith that makes us know that the Almighty can do all things. There is another kind of low-level faith that only believes, does not believe in God, but believes in the pastor. Believes in the human representative of God. There is a faith that comes to God directly and says, God, I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, and I belong to you, and I know the Lord is my shepherd. Because of that, I will not lack. That kind of faith does not wait for a pastor before he believes and before he gets the miracle of God in his life. The faith that knows God is mine. The promises are mine. The power of the Lord is mine. And the breakthrough is mine. That's the kind of faith God wants you to have. Faith in Christ. Faith in God. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Not in Peter. Not in Paul. Your faith is not in man. Your faith is in the Almighty God. And when that faith operates in your life, no storm, no sickness, no mountain, no Satan, no evil power will abide in your life in Jesus' name. And then in verse 25, and he said unto them, where is your faith? And they being afraid, one that saying to one another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and waters. Tell me. In your life, tell me. In your family, tell me. He commanded even the winds and the water and they obey him performance in your life today we're talking about overcoming the storms of life through christ overcoming all the storms of your life can every storm in your life be removed today can every mountain in your life be cleared out of your life today? Overcoming the storms of life through Christ. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the hushing of the storm by his power. Hush. Be calm. Be quiet. And then it's done. Number two, the halting of the stormy it may be a stormy sea it might be a stormy enemy it might be a stormy situation it might be a stormy personality it might be a stormy confederacy conspiring against your life against your progress Whatever they are, whoever they are, wherever they are, the halting of the stormy for his people. All the stormy things in your life, they are halted today. All the stormy personalities in your life, the stormy, the coming, the jack, the, the, the kind of throw the door open and they point at you and they say, are you not afraid of us? Are you not afraid of me? All those stormy people, personalities, they'll be halted in your life in Jesus' name. So that by the grace of God, 
as those stormy people, stormy personalities, and stormy principalities and powers, as they want to take over your life and rule your life. You will stay there, you will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. I will not fear, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies as they storm in. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, I say surely, I say surely. I look back, I see goodness there. I look this way, I see mercy there. Goodness and mercy will follow me. How long? All the days of your life. He holds the stormy and he will do it today. Number three, the healing of the sick as our privilege. We're coming to number one. Number one is the hushing of the storm by his power. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, number one, the fervent cry that calmed their storms. Number two, his final command that conquers our storms. Number three, his faithful companionship that calms every storm. Number one, number one is the fervent cry that calmed their storm. In Psalm 107, reading from verse 25, 107 verse 25, for he commandeth and raises the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves thereof. Look at verse 26. They mount up to the heaven. They go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. Then in verse 27, they reel to and fro and staggered like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. Verse 28, then they cry unto the Lord. They didn't cry unto David, they cried unto the Lord. They didn't cry unto Moses, they cried unto the Lord. They didn't cry unto a human king, they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. And he bringeth them out of their distresses. And then in verse 29, he maketh the storm, tell me, he maketh my storm. Read it that way. He maketh my storm a calm. And it says, I am God, I change not. And it says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. And what he did before, he's still able to do today. He maketh my storm a calm so that the waves thereof are still. Are you there? Today it will happen to you. And the waves thereof, they are still. Then in Bastachi, in Bastachi, then are they glad because they be quiet. So he brings them unto their desired heaven. You will get there. He brings them. They were saved. He brings them. They relied on him. He brings them. Them, his people. Them, his saved people. Them, his peculiar people. Them, his righteous and holy people. He brings them unto their desired heaven. And then in verse 31, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. He will do it in your life. 
We're looking at number two there. Number two, there's the final command that conquers our storm. Mark chapter four. I'm reading from verse 37. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the sheep, so that it was now full. Verse 38. And he was in the hinder part of the sheep, asleep on a pillow. Hold on. Why should Christ go to sleep at such a time? He had said, let us go over, tell me, to the other side, final. Since he had said it, he is the word personified. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld this glory, the glory of the only begotten Son of God. He has spoken the word, he spake, and it was done. On the basis of the word he had spoken, he didn't need to worry, he knew that that word will overcome every storm. The word in your life, the word in your heart, the word in your mouth will overcome every storm. The word had been spoken. And because of that, he knew he, by his word, has the final say. The word of God will have the final say in your life. Headquarters, amen. amen. And so you can go to sleep. The storm is speaking another language. That language is weak. The waves are speaking another language. The greatest voice, the highest voice, the most powerful voice had said, Let us go to the other side. Now, we can go to sleep. Are you there? Yeah. Nothing will take your sleep away from you. Yeah. And they are waking and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that will perish? They were looking at the wrong thing. They were not looking at the word. That's what happens to people. We hear the word. Many people are looking away from that word. They're looking at their storm and they're crying out, Master, we we'll perish. Where is the word? The word alone will destroy every walk of the devil in your life in Jesus' name. When the word is present in your heart, God Himself is present. Give me a good amen. amen. You remember the story of Dagon, the highest power, the greatest power of those people in Ekron, unbelievers, Gentiles. They took the ark of the Lord. Eli was not there. Ophni was not there. Phinehas was not there. The priests were not there. The high priests were not there. They took the Ark of the Covenant and placed it right there in the shrine in the temple of Dagon. When they woke up in the morning, the presence of that Ark of the Covenant had blown down, knocked down their Dagon. The presence of the word and the presence of God in you will knock down every day God. They thought it was a mistake and they set up the day gone again. By the time they came back the following morning, the head of Dagon was cut off. The hands of Dagon cut off. It remained an ugly lamb and so nobody again went to that temple of Dagon 
anymore the presence of Christ in you behold I am with you until the end of the world that presence of God in you will not down will cut off will destroy will demolish every power of Dagon in your life that's, that's what we believe that's what the word says it says my presence shall go with you and therefore we don't need to worry about look at that storm look at that danger look at that noise look at that difficulty you are victorious in Jesus name Look at verse 39. In verse 39, it says, And he arose. Who is that? The King of glory. Is the Lord of glory. Is the one that is mighty in battle. I am here. And you, Satan, you bring a storm. And he arose. He will arise for you and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea is the creator of ocean and sky and sea speaking is the creator of everything in the universe speaking to them and he said unto the sea peace be still the prince of peace has spoken in your life the prince of peace has spoken in your family and when the prince of peace rises up and he says peace be still there'll be a calm whatever is boiling in your brain and boiling in your mind and boiling in your family when the prince of peace rises up and he says peace be still thank god today is your day and the wind ceased and there was a great calm look at verse 40 in verse 40 and he said unto them why are you so fearful you are saved why are you so fearful you have the fullness of christ with you why are you so fearful you're sanctified and you're given the nature the divine nature of christ why are you so fearful you have the power of the holy ghost with you why are you so fearful you heard my word just now when i said let us go over to the other side why are you so fearful how is it that she have no faith they had faith for salvation they had faith for sanctification. They had faith for going to heaven. Why is it you don't have faith over the storm? Your faith will increase. In verse 41, And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this? The son of man that became a human being here that we might be raised to his level what manner of man is this is an heavenly man is the holy man is the man that came down from heaven and he came with all the power of heaven with him and that is your savior and that is your healer and that is your deliverer and that is the one that is with you is greater than lucifer is greater than the devil is greater than the old serpent and in your life you will always see the manifestation of his power in jesus name what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him any water trying to get into your sheep Christ will command and the water and the wind and the waves will obey the Lord in your life in my life victory will be permanent look at some look at some 33 some 33 I'm reading from verse 9 in some 33 verse 9 4 he spake and it was done he spake and it was done 
everything you are hearing I read from his word he speak it will be done in your life he commanded and it stood fast looking at number three here number three is faithful companionship that comes every storm that comes every storm as he entered into the ship storms over have you hear your amen he is in my life i say he is in my life storms over he said he'll take you to heaven storms over he said i'll never leave you i'll never forsake you storms over he said i am with you all your tears are dried up look at that isaiah chapter 41 we're reading from verse 10 it says fear thou not for i am with thee fear thou not why because i am with thee fear thou not why because the creator of the heavens and the earth the ones that rules from the throne of heaven he says fear thou not why shouldn't I fear God? Because I am with you. The one that is greater than Satan, greater than storm, greater than evil spirit, and greater than sickness, and greater than every power in the world. He says, I am with you. And the consequence says, fear thou not. Neither be dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen you. I will strengthen you. Now, if you are looking in the direction of God and he says, I am here, the creator of the heavens and the earth and the master of the sea and the ocean, and he says, I will be with you. Why then will you fear? And he says, I will strengthen you. No matter what comes in your way, he will strengthen you. And no matter the situation that you may confront as you get back home, when you leave the service and you are going back home, you're already singing. You're already rejoicing. Because the one who always gives the victory is going with you and he said, I will strengthen you. I will help you now. Why should you fear anymore? There's no finance. There's no food. There's no helper. And there is nothing I'm leaning on. The one who fed the children of Israel all those 40 years every day with manna. He said, I'm still here. I will help you. The one who brought water out of the rock, he said, I'll satisfy you. What are you worried about? I will help thee. In your exam, he will help you. In the tests of life, he will help you. You don't have to do what the people of the world are doing. They don't have any helper. They don't have any strength. They don't have any sustainer. They don't have any supplier. You have what they do not have. It says, I will help you. Yea, I will uphold thee. Uh -uh, look at all this. Number one, I am with you. Number two, I am thy God. Number three, I will strengthen you. Number five, I will help you. Number it says now, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. It is done. I said it is done. Look at Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 20. It says, and I will, not that I may, 
<laughs> not that if I'm in a good mood, it's always in a good mood. It's always in a happy mood. It's always in a controlling mood. It doesn't change. And nothing jolts him. And he says, I will make thee unto this people a first brazen wall. You see all the people making gates and making walls and out their houses. Why? They don't want any uninvited guests to come in at a time when they are sleeping. When you are sleeping, no uninvited guests will come to your residence. Because he will make thee unto these people a fierce brazen wall. And they shall fight against thee. But they shall not prevail against thee. They shall fight against thee. God, I don't want anybody to fight against me. Then you don't want to see the miracle of deliverance. They shall fight. Look at them. The Egyptians, they are coming. And we just let Egypt. Look at the Red Sea before us. Look at the mountains all around us. And look at the Egyptian army. Even Pharaoh himself is leading the army. And he said, I'll get them back. Don't worry, nobody can get your back. Yeah. And so, as they looked, they feared, they cried. That's how baby Christians always cry and fear. They might have been Christians for 30 years. Maybe Christians, it's not the chronological age. It is their growth in the Lord, their growth in the world. Maybe Christians always cry. Moses, why have you brought us out onto this place? And then Moses also, because they cried, he also started crying to the Lord. Sometimes the crying of the members, if the leaders are not careful, they cry like them. The Bible says, like father, like children. But people reverse that, like children, like fathers. And so, as the children were crying, their father also started crying, Old Covenant, this is New Covenant. The fathers will not cry. The mothers will not cry. And God said, Moses, why are you crying unto me? What's that in your hand? The answer is in your hand. I said, the answer is in your hand. And he said, it's a rod, stretch it. And a miracle that never happened in history will happen. The Lord allowed Pharaoh and the chariots to follow so that a new miracle a spectacular miracle a great miracle something you've never read about in history so that it will happen and moses struck the rod and the sea parted in two and then the children of israel all fear now was gone and they went on and then pharaoh and the egyptian chariot said we can do that too what an Israelite can do, a Gentile can do, no. What Moses can do, Pharaoh can do, uh-uh. It doesn't happen that way. If it's for them, it's also for us. No, it doesn't happen. But the children of the chariots of Egypt, they followed after. And God allowed them to get into the middle of the sea. And then God told Moses, use that rod again. Stretch it. And the water closed up on them. They fight, they will not win. You will be the winner. Look at that. In verse 20, it says, They shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee. That's the secret. 
high armor was thee to save thee and to deliver thee says the lord look at verse 21 in verse 21 and i will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked and i will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible amen in your life amen in your family amen point number two is the halting of the stormy for his people we're looking at um, psalm 107 and we're reading from verse 29 in verse 29 it says he maketh the storm a calm today so that the waves thereof are still peace be still that's Tommy marriage peace be still that Tommy community peace be still three things number one the unwise disposition of self-subjection to storms number two the unnecessary delay of solution to our storms number three the undeniable deliverance of saints from storms look at number one number one is the unwise disposition of self-subjection to storms we're looking at Jonah chapter 1 and we're looking at verse 3 but Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and he found a sheep going to Tarshish so he paid the fear thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Verse 4, But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea that the sheep was like to be broken now jonah brought the storm upon himself god said go here he went the other direction his will was opposed to the will of god his walk was contrary to the way of God. His leaning disposition was different from the demand of God. Because of that, he brought the storm against himself. You know, that's, that's what people do. They have unwise disposition. God says, go this way. They turn, they go the other way. God says the way of the transgressors is hard. All the same, they go the way of the transgressor. Because of that, storms come. Not only that, the people that admit Jonah into their own sheep. Here is the runaway Jonah. Here is a prodigal Jonah. Here is a backsliding Jonah. Here is somebody that is contrary to the will and the word and the way of God. And he comes into their lives, a runaway backslider. Once you get married to you, and you are still a standing believer, and God is against him. Is angry with the wicked every day and then comes into your life because he has money, because he has.
connections and because he has popularity and you allow him into your life a pastor's daughter who had forsaken the way that she was trained in and has now gone into the world may not be using jewelry they might not have punched holes in her ears but she talks like the world and thinks like the world and drinks like the world and does everything like the world she's gone she's forsaking the teaching the truth that her father her mother drilled into her when she was young and now you see the standing believer and then she comes dangling this and that and you allow the backsliding jonah josephine to come into church. That's why people have storms. And they say, I cannot understand. I am saved. I'm this and that. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea. So that the sheep was like to be broken. And they were told in verse 11. In verse 11, then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee that the sea may become unto us? For the sea wrought and was tempestuous. The man, Jonah, was not ready to repent. Is fighting against the Almighty. Is fighting against God. Is fighting against its Maker. And he said, "We now know. It's your presence in our sheep that has caused this this storm. It is your disobedience and disregard for the Almighty that has caused this." And verse 12 in verse 12 and he said unto them take me up and cast me forth into the sea so shall the sea become unto you for i know that for my sake is this great tempest upon you but jonah why didn't you repent at that time? Uh -uh. If I repent, then I have to do what God said I should go and do, but I'm not ready. Are you ready to suffer more? He said, once I get into the sea, it's all over. And God has a thousand and one ways to fight if Jonah wanted to fight, so God prepared a great whale and swallowed up Jonah. He got to the bottom of the sea. Then he decided it does not pay fighting against God. And inside that whale, he repented. He said, I will pay the vows that I vowed unto the Lord. And the Lord commanded the whale. He commands the wind. He commands the waves. He commands the waters. He commands the whale. He commands everything on the face of the earth. And as he commands them, they will work for you. And the whale dropped Jonah, not in his town, not in Tashish, dropped Jonah at the shore of Nineveh. What God says you should do, why don't you do it immediately? Why are you fighting? Why are you wasting time? Why are you, you know, going to this and going to that? Why are you complaining? Do what the Lord has told you to do. They will become in your life. They have become in my life. Confirmed in Jesus' name. I'm looking at number two here. Number two, the unnecessary delay of solution to our storms. 
unnecessary delay in Second Chronicles chapter 33. Second Chronicles chapter 33, I'm reading from verse 9. So Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err and to do worse than the heathen whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. Verse 10. And the Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they were not happy. They delayed the storm, the suffering in their lives. The Lord wanted them to come out of that disobedience, out of that defiance, he said, no, you are not going to obey. And because of that, problems started and problems increased in their lives. In verse 11, in verse 11, it says, wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captives of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among thorns and bound him with fetters and carried him to Babylon. Look at verse 12. And when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God. Manasseh, why did you wait? When the Lord sent his messengers and his prophets unto you, and now that you are bound in fetters and with thorns, it says he humbled himself greatly. Manasseh you could have done that yesterday. You could have done that last month. You could have done that last year. Why did you delay the solution to your problem? And then we're told he humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. Look at verse 13. And he prayed unto him, and he was entreated of him, and heard his supplication, and brought him again. To Jerusalem, a God is a merciful God. A God is a loving God. Even though he delayed, he suffered for his delay. But eventually he humbled himself and he prayed to the Lord. And the Lord had then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. You will know that God is God. You will not delay anymore. I will not delay anymore. My brothers and sisters, since we're still going to do it, why don't we do it now? Since we know, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Why are we delaying? Why are we delaying in, you know, uh, doubting and sluggish, uh, you know, meandering? Why don't we do it now? Since we know that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, why are we not born again now? And since we know that if he's going to open the door of heaven to anyone, that depravity has to go. And that uh, deliberate disobedience has to go. If we know that without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Why do we delay? Why don't we make it today and the Lord will answer your prayer. We're looking at number three. Number three here, the undeniable deliverance of saints from storms. When we become the saints of God, He will deliver us. He will deliver you. In Second Corinthians chapter one, reading from verse nine. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse nine. But we are the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raises the dead. Verse 10, in verse 10, who delivered us, delivered us, 
delivered us. Amen. Amen. Can you point to God's deliverance in your life, in the past? What he did in the past, he will do today. Amen. Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver today. Amen. And this happy moment of your life today, he doth deliver and then in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Do you see deliverance from three tenses? He delivered in the past. Amen. Amen. He delivers today. Amen. Amen. And whatever lies on your way, he will yet deliver you. He will deliver me. What you say in church, say it outside there. What you say in church, say it when the storm rises. What you say in church, say it in your community anywhere. The word is powerful here in church. The word will be mighty in your community. What happens to us is that we say a different word at home than we say in church. We say a different word in the market that we say in the church. We say a different word during sickness and during storm than we say in the service. But if you say the same word, he delivered me, say that. He delivers me now. He will yet deliver me. Let the word of deliverance be permanent in your mouth. Nothing will bring you down in Jesus' name. I come to point number three here. Point number three, the healing of the sick as our privilege. The healing of the sick as our privilege. Matthew chapter 14, I'm reading from verse 14. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 14, and Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion towards them, and he healed their sick. He healed their sick. Somebody say amen. amen. Look at verse 34. In verse 34, and when they were gone over, they came into the land of Genesaret. In verse 35, and when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all that country round about and brought unto him all that were diseased. All that were, tell me, diseased. Look at that word. Diseased. Is is when there is calm, rest, joy, happiness, stillness, no problem in the body. Is. This is. Is anything that contradicts that is in your stomach, in your brain, in your hand, in your leg, in your waist, in your joints, anything that contradicts that is is called this is. And so, in your life, if there is any disease, you're feeling uncomfortable there, you're feeling hot there, you're feeling confusion there, and you're feeling sickness there, and you're feeling infirmity here, it will set you free. Is is to bring the peace in relation to ease in your life. 
is the prince of peace. That's why any time and every time he sees anything contradicting ease and peace in your life, he must bring a kill. He must bring a calm. It must bring a solution there. The healing of the sick as our privilege. Look at that verse 36. In verse 36, and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched were made perfectly whole. You will touch him. He will make you perfectly whole. Three things. Number one, the touch of healing in his presence. Number two, the thoroughness of his healing without price. Number three, the transfer of his healing with triumphant power. Number one, number one is the touch of healing in his presence. The touch of healing in his presence. We're looking at Mark chapter 5, reading from verse 25. In Mark chapter 5, verse 25, and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years, 26, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Verse 27, when she had heard of Jesus came in the press, in the crowd, through the multitude behind, and touched his garment. And touched his garment. Look at that. The woman did not even have any chance to shake hands with Christ. The woman did not have any chance to bend down with tears and touch the feet of Christ. The woman did not have any chance to be anointed with oil. The woman did not have any chance for Christ to stretch out his hand and uh, touch her. But she said, I don't have to touch this person power radiates around him. It's like the magnetic waves all around the magnet. And so I know that the anointing is not only in his hand, it's not only in his body, even his garment, the anointing is there. And so she touched his garment. You all touch him. Verse 28 says, For she said, She said, What you say in your heart, what you say in yourself, what you say to yourself will determine whether you remain a victim or you will become a victor. You will become a victor. For she said, if I may make touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Verse 29, and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Healed of that plague. Healed of that play. You are healed in Jesus' name. Verse 34. In verse 34, it says, And he cried, said unto her, the woman, daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Not just the torch, the torch and the faith. The prayer and the faith. The believing in the Lord. It is that faith. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go 
in peace and be whole of thy plague Number two, number two, we're looking at the thoroughness of his healing without price. We're looking at Matthew chapter 14, verse 36. Matthew 14, verse 36, and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched were made tell me perfectly whole perfectly whole perfectly whole the healing was sorrow your healing will be sorrow yeah. acts chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 16 acts chapter 3 verse 16 and his name through faith in his name has made this man strong where is the man has made this woman strong where is the woman <laughs> makes you strong i can't see your hand woman of faith amen it says and his name through faith in his name has made this man, this woman, this person strong, whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Your healing will be thorough in Jesus' name. Number three now. Number three, the transfer of his healing with triumphant power. The transfer of that healing to his people, his trusting people. Mark chapter 16. Verse 15. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. I will not be an unbeliever. I will not be an unbeliever. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Salvation for you in Jesus' name. Verse 17, in verse 17, and these signs shall follow them who? That believe. These signs shall follow them that believe when you have charged your battery and your battery remains charged and you're watching that battery the clock connected with that battery keeps on running anytime you can bring it out it's still there because the battery is fully charged and as you are watching and the battery is going down then you plug it again and charge and the hand of your clock will keep on moving as you charge your heart the battery of your heart and the faith is there all the time you don't wait until your battery of faith runs down completely. And now you try to phone and connect heaven and the thing will not work. And you say, why? I don't understand why. And you complain. Complaint will not charge the battery. And you wonder, wondering will not charge the battery. And you're asking your wife, why? Why is this? We have always prayed and God, that one will not check the battery. Plug it into the original socket. 
power will come into your battery. Are you watching? 5%, 10%, don't remove it yet. 20%, don't remove it yet. 50, leave it there. Don't cry, don't call, don't pray, don't use 100%. Then you pick that phone, pa, 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 pa. 11 digits. Hello? Heaven will answer you. Because you're calling and your battery of faith is full, my battery is charged. I said my battery is charged. I put in the watch, I put in the trust, I put in the confidence, and then I send an SOS to heaven immediately. They hear my call on the other side. And they answer me from the other side. Who is there? It's me. And heaven will say, tell me what you want up to the half of the kingdom and i will do it for you because this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they will cast out devils in my name they will cast out devils look at verse 18 in the latter part of verse 18 nothing will hurt you they shall lay hands on the seed and they shall recover the battery of faith is fully charged verse 20 in verse 20 we are told and they went forth you are going forth you are going forth with power you're going forth with authority. You're going forth with assurance. You're going forth with unction. You're going forth with anointing. Let all the principalities and powers clear out of the way. The champions of faith are coming. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them, confirming the word of signs following. The words of your mouth will be confirmed. The decree of your mouth will be confirmed. As you go, let faith increase. Let fear be buried. Let your battery of faith be fully charged. Nothing will hurt you and nothing will stand before you in Jesus' name. Who is there? Your battery charged. The word of God inside your heart. Faith and confidence inside you. That's right, my sister, stand up there. Brother, stand up there. Your time has come. It's time, it's time to get your desire and your demand to heaven and heaven will hear you. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, here am I. Where is the storm that will stand before a child of God that has faith in the Lord? Where is the sickness and where is the evil spirit or evil power that will stand before the children of God that have their battery of faith charged and now they can call unto heaven. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let him make you strong. You have salvation there. You have sanctification there. You have the power of the Holy Ghost upon your life. Why don't you tell the Lord, oh Lord, here am I, here am I, here am I, never to weep again, never to complain again, never to be so sorry for myself again. But you know, the Lord has promised I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you everywhere you go. His presence alone will destroy all the power of Dagon, Dragon in your life.
tell him, tell him. He will subdue that spirit. He will heal that sickness. He will destroy all the works of the devil. He will pray. We we'll face call with a fully charged phone. The line is clear. No blockage. No failure of the system. He will answer your prayer. If there's any storm you brought on yourself, like Jonah, surrender. Give yourself over to the Lord. And say, Lord, in my foolishness, I went away from you. But in humility, I return. They that observe lying vanities, those are the people that bring destruction upon themselves. Secret sin. Subtle sin, will bring star suffering, deliberate sinning, will bring storm, defiant disobedience, will bring storm. But when you turn around, when you repent, and if it's a situation you have to make restitution, when you make that restitution and you stop going the way of the transgressor, and you call upon the Lord, then will the Lord answer. Tell him, don't delay your own solution. Don't delay your own healing, your own deliverance, your own victory. Call upon the Lord. Why are you going to delay? If you are not saved, salvation is available here today. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you are not sanctified, why do you delay? When you know, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Why will you delay? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Why will you delay? That you might deliver us from the hands of our enemies, and that we might serve him in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life since you know the promises there in the covenant what will you delay why don't you call upon him now and give you thorough sanctification thorough restoration thorough transformation
perfect soundness, deliverance, healing, perfect, undebatable solution to the problem you have. Why don't you call upon him? Why are you going to allow this day to pass again? And then the problems and the challenges are still there. When you know God is here and there is nothing He cannot do. They shall seek me and find me when they shall seek for me with all their heart, all your heart, all your heart, all your heart, let him cleanse you. Seek him with all your heart. Lay everything on the altar. Consecrate your life fully without reservation unto the Lord. They give you complete restoration, thorough righteousness, thorough healing, thorough deliverance, thorough, complete, perfect soundness of spirit, soul, and body. Don't leave any stone unturned. Don't follow the Lord half-heartedly. Don't pray a wishy-washy prayer. Don't consecrate the refuse and then the real treasure you're holding back. Promise to serve the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, with the totality of your knowledge and skill and commitment. When you follow the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and you're not reserving anything and you worship him without a rival there's no rival in your life competing with the almighty god when your whole heart your whole life is giving to the lord then will he do that which he has promised Believe, have faith in God, say faithful God, a trustable God, a trustworthy God. We can trust Him, He cannot fail. Believe him. Don't look in any other direction. Only the direction of God. And he will do what he has said he will do. Faithful is he who has called you. Who also will do it. Faithful is he was promised 
you will do it. Hold on to that promise. That promise will not fail, cannot fail. In Jesus' name we pray. <clears throat> There's a calm in my soul. There is healing in my body. There is assurance in my heart. God has answered my prayer. I will not cry anymore. I will not suffer anymore. The joy of heaven will be my strength. Where are you? Solution. Deliverance. Power. Purity. Joy. Happiness. You are going home with answers to your prayer. Raise up that hand, Father, in Jesus' name. I pray in every heart, in every soul, in every person, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, answers to their prayers in Jesus' name. I pray the cleansing, the pardon, the salvation will be permanent. The sanctification, the holiness, the purity will be real. The healing and the perfect soundness will be definite in every life in Jesus' name. Deliverance, freedom from every power of evil spirit guaranteed for your people in Jesus name dominion dominion victory day and night morning and noon weekday and Sunday dominion in every life in Jesus name watch you feared before will become afraid of you all your needs be supplied the help god has promised the companionship god has promised the fearlessness and the boldness god has promised be upon you from now in jesus name in church you are blessed at home you are blessed on your way you are blessed in your profession you are blessed and every negative thing in your life reversed in jesus name 
every dagon, every dragon fall away from your side. Joy, happiness, goodness, fulfillment, abundance, calm, peace, security, follow you everywhere you go. And the signs and the wonders that God has done in your life, you will enjoy. You will give testimony. And I pray that nothing will take your joy away. Lord, confirm me each in every life. In Jesus' name we pray.